In this video, we will take a look at the functions and the turtle routings of signals within the Future Retro Transient. Let's start with the trigger end function. This is the signal inserted into the 8th inch trigger end jack on the front panel. When a rising edge trigger greater than 8 tenths of a volt is detected, voice 1 and 2 will start playing their selected sample from the beginning. Notice how this trigger signal also feeds the modulation oscillators 1 and 2. If the sync function for a modulation oscillator is turned on, this trigger will cause its waveform to restart at the phase you have specified. In addition, all random modulation sources being used will generate a new random value each time a trigger is detected. Now let's take a look at voices 1 and 2. Each voice defines a sample to play, and there are more than 400 samples to choose from. Having two voices is nice, since we can layer, modulate, or crossfade between the two tones for some interesting new results. The sample selection for each voice can be modulated by external CV1 or 2, knob 1 or 2, randomized, or multiple combinations of these sources. The output of each voice then feeds into the mod 1 and mod 2 functions. These mod functions allow you to do things like mute the sample, bypass this stage to play the sample unaffected, apply amplitude modulation or ring modulation using the modulation oscillators or the sample selected for each voice. More complex routings include the ability to process a single voice using both mod 1 and mod 2 in series. Mod 1 and mod 2 functions also have their own independent gain settings for adjusting the level of each voice. Modulation oscillators 1 and 2 can only be routed to mod 1 and mod 2 sections. Each modulation oscillator can serve several functions. It can act as an envelope, LFO, or oscillator covering the frequency range of 0 Hz to 20 kHz. Each modulation oscillator can produce traditional waveforms like sine, triangle, sawtooth, square wave, and variations of these, as well as a number of unique envelope waveforms suited more for amplitude modulation. This means the envelopes in the transient are looping and can be manipulated in more ways than traditional envelopes. The frequency and phase of the modulation oscillators can be modulated by external CV1 or 2, knob 1 or 2, randomized, or multiple combinations of these. The output of each mod function then feeds a voltage-controlled mixer. The balance between voices can be stationary or modulated by an external CV1 or 2, knob 1 or 2, randomized, or multiple combinations of these. The output of the mixer is then routed to the digital effects section. Here you can choose three different types of effects including bit crushing, distortion, and companding. Each effect allows you to adjust the bit depth of the effect from 1 to 12 bits, and further adjust the resample rate. At the highest bit and resample rates, audio will pass through the effects section unaffected. Audio is then routed to a multimode filter. This filter provides low pass, band pass, and high pass filter types, as well as an all pass setting that allows audio to bypass the filter altogether. The frequency of the filter can be modulated by external CV1 or 2, knob 1 or 2, randomized, or multiple combinations of these. Audio is then routed from the filter output to the dynamic section. This dynamic section provides a voltage controlled amplifier where sound levels can be defined or modulated by external CV1 or 2, knob 1 or 2, randomized, or multiple combinations of these sources. Audio then passes from the dynamic section onto the final output. This audio is then present at the audio out jack located on the front panel. Let's talk a little bit about the modulation sources. These include CV1 and 2 inputs and a findable knobs 1 and 2 located on the front panel, as well as a unique random number generator for each modulation destination. The CV inputs have a usable range from 0 to 5 volts. Each CV input has a dedicated attenuator knob to scale the amplitude of the external control voltage. Knobs 1 and 2 can act as real-time controls covering the same range as a 0 to 5 volt external control voltage. The modulations provided by these external CVs and definable knobs can be routed to control multiple different parameters simultaneously. Each modulation destination also allows you to find the polarity and amount of modulation to be applied to that particular parameter. There are a total of nine different random function generators where one is dedicated to each modulation destination. There are quite a few other combinations of modulation sources, and these primarily include the ability to use either of the assignable knobs to further attenuate or add an offset to the external control voltage or the internal random values being generated. As you can see, there are a lot of functions built into the transient, making it a very powerful module on its own. 
and when incorporated into a full modular system, you're limited only by your imagination. I hope this gives you a better idea of what is possible in the Transient module and would invite you to check out our YouTube channel to see more tutorials for the Transient as well as the entire line of Future Retro products.